look at question six from the compound data one workshop. So for this question here, I've got an integer array with eight spaces uh, and I've already got this loop that we again know goes through each item in an array. Um, and then for each of those items, it assigns a random number between zero uh, and nine. We know it's not 10 because that number is exclusive. Um, and because the random function returns a float, we've got this int casting which rounds it down uh, to the closest int. So if I run this code, and it's printing out each one there, when I run this code, I've got eight random numbers between zero and nine. Um, but that also means that every time I run my code again, I'll get a different collection of numbers because each time I run the code, I'm getting a new random number for each number. So you can see I've got different ones here and they will be different each time, um, which is good because it means that we don't have to, or uh, well, we've got a nice way to test our code. We can just run our code again and make sure that it works for any given eight numbers between zero and nine. So there are three things that we want to do. Um, let's have a look at the first one first. The first one is we want to find the total of all items in array R. So we want the sum of all items. And we saw this question when we traced 3.4. So actually it's the same code as 3.4. What we need is a variable, um, which you can call whatever you want. I'm gonna call mine uh, total. And I'll make it equal to zero. And then I want to loop through my array. And for each item in my array, I want to add that item to my total so I can get the sum of all of them. So write that same loop. And then for each item, oh, I don't want to do that. I want to add that item to my total. Um, so this will go through each item in my array and then I've got total plus equals array i, so we'll add that value. Um, so let's test this and make sure that it works. I'll add a print line statement after here. Um, and I'll write a little comment as well. Total of items is, and then I'll concatenate that with total because I'm going to have a few print line statements. It's nice to um, know what each one is for. So I've got the total of items, or oh, R because this is a print line, so I'll add a new line here. Cool, I've got the total of items is 41. Let's double check. We've got four, seven, 12, 20, 29, 33, 37, 41, great. Testing my math skills this morning, but that works well. And if I run that again, we can make sure it works by, let's get some smaller numbers. That's a bit nicer. 4, 13, 20, 25, 26, 29, 31, awesome. So that one's working as expected, um, great. So let's have a look at question two now. Question two is asking for the number of items in the array that are greater than five. Um, so in this case here with these numbers, this should give us two because there are only two numbers greater than five. Um, so again, we want to loop through each item in our array. So I'm going to copy this loop, but I don't want to be adding the item to our total. I want to be checking that item, checking if its value is greater than five. Um, and if it is greater than five, I want to add one to our counter because we found one more item. So um, let's create an integer variable to keep track of that counter. Um, I'll call it greater than five. Um, and to check whether a number is greater than five, uh, we can use a condition. So we say if the item is greater than five, then we should just plus one to greater than five. So if the item isn't greater than five, um, this condition won't be run, it'll be false. 
and it'll just skip over it and it will skip to the next um, item in the array. So let's add another print line. There are greater than five numbers greater than five. Great, let's check. There are six numbers greater than five. So let's check, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, perfect. So that one looks like it's working. Try again, there are three numbers greater than five. One, two, three. Awesome, so that one's working well. Um, and then the last one here, we want the maximum value in our array. So the biggest value. So again, we're using a loop to loop through each item um, and compare them to find which one is the biggest one. So we'll need a variable to store the biggest number. Um, and I'm going to say that to start with, the biggest number is the first item. And then I'll compare that first item to the second item. If the second item is bigger, I'll update this variable here to have the value of the first item, of the second item. <laughs> so that means that my loop will start at 1. It won't start at 0 because um, we don't need to compare the first item with itself. Um, and there's two ways of doing this. I can say with a conditional, if the current max value, if that max value, or rather, if the current item is greater than the max value, then we should update max value to be the current item. So that way, as you go along our array, it's comparing each item to the current biggest item that we found so far as we've searched through our array. So we can do this, or um, we know that there is, oops, I just clicked something, go back. Um, there's a max method that we can use. So the max method is an informed producer. It takes in two or um, even three inputs, they can be floats or ints, um, and then it will return the biggest of those two. So what this code is doing is pretty much the same what the max val, or sorry, what the max method is already doing. So I can say max val is equal to max of itself and the current array item that we're looking at. So whichever one of these is bigger is what max val is being um, allocated. So the biggest number is let's run this. The biggest number is eight. Is that true? Yes, biggest number is eight. Let's test it again. It's good to test our code. Biggest number is eight. All right, let's get a different bigger number. Biggest number is eight again. Biggest number is nine. Okay, so that one's a bit different. Great. Um, and that's all for question six.